a much smaller show too. Uh, yeah. All right, here we go. We're going live. Okay. I think we are. Yeah. Well, I like the look of the art behind you. Oh, nice. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think we are much smaller. Show we too. are live. Uh, okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Langdon. And this is Emerge Gallery. We are here to um, to go through the Wax Show. Uh, this is a show that I've been wanting to do for quite quite a few years now. I'm a big fan of encaustic, and um, yeah, I've uh, so I've been wanting to do an encaustic show, but a lot of artists uh, don't necessarily work in encaustic because it is a, a pretty toxic. Um, uh, medium to work in. You need a, a, a lot of ventilation uh, for it. So a lot of artists work in cold wax and other forms of wax. So I decided to open it up to just a broader wax show uh, to allow those artists to participate as well. Um, so what we're going to do today is um, we're going to go over, I'm going to introduce each piece in the show um, and some of the artists will uh, will discuss the work. Hi. Robert, John Werner, talked to you yesterday. Yes, the work is up. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, what happened? I don't know. It was up this morning. Oh, okay. So, like so I said, it takes, I'm right in the middle of a virtual show. Okay. So I can't really talk, but okay. uh, yes, I'm sorry. I was going to give you a call. Um, I've just been running around. So okay, long. that's okay. Great. Okay, you got it, John. Yeah, they're up. They're both up. Sorry about that. Sometimes it takes uh, takes a little time for them to publish it. I'm not sure why, but I do need to figure that out. All right, you too. Okay, so back to you. Uh, yeah, so this is the wax show. Uh, let me show you show you the gallery. You can get a little visual. It's about 35 artists in the show, um, all working, as I said, with wax in different ways. Um, encaustic work, cold wax, beeswax uh wax paper in one in one case um and you know one of the things that i like to do with my group shows is really show the different ways that artists are using the medium um it's uh you know it's it's a very talented community here in the hudson valley um in the new york metropolitan area which is where most of the artists i work with tend to be Okay, so that's the wax show. And there's also a handful of additional works um, on Artsy. Uh, I have a shop on artsy.net, that's A-R-T-S-Y dot net, where you can view this show, previous shows, and online exclusives. Uh, you can view the work and then also purchase directly through them as well. Uh, it is a site that has a, uh, a, a international collector base, so it's a great opportunity for literally the world to see uh, the work that I'm exhibiting here in Socrates. So let's let's bring up our uh, the artsy page. All right, let me share with you what I'm seeing. Oh, hold on. Why am I not seeing it here now? Hmm. Are you seeing uh No, not yet. Sorry, folks. For some reason, my settings are asking me to do something different. Technical difficulties, thanks for hanging in there. Okay. When you don't want this stuff to happen, it does. Okay. So let's uh, let's see if you're seeing what I'm seeing here. All right, let's try this one more time. Okay, here we go. Great. So 
What you're seeing is the RT page. This is my homepage. Uh, usually right up front are the different shows that I have going. Like I said, there's, there's usually one at the gallery and then there's some online exclusives as well. So uh, right over here, this is the, uh, this is called Snap. It's cell phone photography and this is an online show. This is a um, one person show, Lowell Bar, playing in the dark. I did a solo show for Lowell a few years ago at the gallery. It was very popular, so I decided to put it online. Another solo show of a wonderful celebrities artist named Faye Wood. And then um, we've got the wax show, which is um, what we're looking at now. So when you get here, you would just click on the um, on the show. You'll see some visuals of the, the gallery, how it's set up here. And then right underneath, you'll see a, a viewing room. It's a, it's a real user-friendly way of looking at the show. So if you click on the viewing room, it will give you a little information about the works. And then you can view each of the works all on one page with information provided from the artists, artist statements and whatnot about each. The other way to do this is to um, just go the standard way and you'll see each of the works listed individually, but you would need to click on each piece to see the additional information for each. So that's the way we're gonna do this. So our first artist is uh, Robin Adler. This is, um, this first piece is called Anchored. It's encaustic on wood, it's eight by 10. Uh, there's a lot of intensity with vibrant shapes, movements and graphic markings, but the embedded shapes in the right corner appear still and calm. This stillness and calm represents a goal for, for Robin of remaining anchored internally, even when there is intense or chaotic energy around her. Oh, I'm sorry, I read the wrong one. This is anchored, which I just read for. The second one is called Of a Sunday. This is in classic on wood as well. This is 10 by 10. Um, the title of Of a Sunday references the process of creating art with wax. Encaustic is a new art form for Robin, and she's excited to be experimenting with such a dynamic medium. Even though it has her signature expressive painting style, which it does, uh, the soft movements of the wax, the gentle and slow pace of working with the wax and pigment put her in a mind of Sunday afternoon, hence the title of a Sunday. Next artist is by Lowell Barr. Uh, this is called Hungry Pirate. Uh, this is an assemblage with uh, all encaustic. It's eight by eight. And um, as Lowell has a, a, a wickedly dark sense of humor. Um, if you, if you um, are drawn to that, I would definitely encourage you to go see her show on RC, which we just had a look at um, called Playing in the Dark. I have two pieces by Michelle Card. Uh, this first piece is called uh, The Dance. Uh, the dance is uh, oils, cold wax, oil paint, and pan on wood. It's 11 by 14. It's a brand new piece from this year. Uh, her mood while painting this was the feeling of freedom. The goal was to openly enjoy every stroke. Over the past year, she has enjoyed the challenge of working with oils mixed with cold wax. She finds that most that the best way of using the medium is by using anything but a paintbrush, which a number of artists tend to, to do in this show, as you'll see. Um, also, landscapes and abstracts are, for her, the most successful paintings. Okay. The next piece by Michelle is a landscape, as we had just mentioned. This is called uh, By the Sea. This has oils, cold wax, oil pastels, and it's on canvas, it's 11 by 14, again, 2023, a new piece. Wandering uh, Island Beach State Park, which is in New Jersey, she's looking for an isolated spot to enjoy the serenity of nature. Over the past year, she has enjoyed the challenges of working with oils mixed with cold wax that she finds most, uh, the best way of using the medium is by using anything but a paintbrush. We have uh, two pieces by, um, oh. Lowell, did I miss you? Did you come in? No, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have two pieces by um, Anna Cinquemani, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. 
Um, Anna is an artist that uh, lives in Red Hook, New York, on the other side of the river. Uh, this first piece is called School Two, a fish story. It's in caustic on plywood. It's 24 by 24. Uh, the result of time spent at an encaustic workshop at RNF Handmade Paints in Kingston. Uh, just want to point out if you are an encaustic artist or are interested in um, doing encaustic work, I highly encourage you to get in touch with RNF. Uh, they are the manufacturers of encaustic. They're right here in Kingston. They have a wonderful workshop. Um, everything you need to uh, to work with encaustic. So this came, as I said, from a workshop. Um, Robert, in, just yeah. FYI, um, they're not doing workshops in at the Kingston location anymore. Uh, you know, I heard something about that. I heard that they were that they might be ending it at the end of the year. Okay, yeah. okay. but they do. do All right, well, th thank you for that, Tracy. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so if you want to do one of their workshops, which I have been wanting to do, um, I guess I got to get there, get there before the end of the year, uh, to do it. Uh, but they, they are the, um, they are the folks that do the acoustics. So they, um, if you want to try it on your own, if you have the ventilation, um, definitely make a visit over to RNF, um, and they can hook you up with whatever you need to get going. Uh, so um, Anna's approached the painting process through a series of steps. The end result is a visual, a counterbalance of color, texture, and contrast. This is the second piece from Anna called Rainy Days and Mondays. Um, uh, she finds herself setting boundaries and creating safe zones, resulting in a work which conveys space or tension or a bit of both. Two pieces by um, Ellen Crimmins. Both of these works are um, watercolor uh, coated in wax. And I mean, the the, um, the coating in wax really brings out a real beautiful quality to the watercolor that you wouldn't normally see, um, you know, just out on watercolor paper. So this first one um, is called Innisfree White. As I said, it's watercolor waxed. It's uh, 10 and a half by 13 and a half. The second piece is called Pear, obviously. Uh, that's watercolor wax as well, nine and a half by seven and a half. And Ellen is an artist living in Salt Point, New York. Have a wonderful piece by uh, Shelly Davis. Shelly is a really prolific artist here in a, a little hamlet of Socrates called Malvin on the Hudson. Um, I'm always thrilled to have Shelly's work in my shows, she's always up to the challenge of creating whatever uh, theme I put out there, um, which is one of my goals to get artists um, excited and creating. Uh, this one is called Alter. Uh, I'm gonna go back just a little bit and it is a um, an homage to um, her dog, Hina, who she unfortunately um, lost this year. Uh, but there are a few different visuals that I wanted to um, to have a look at a couple different angles. Um, it is an assemblage piece. Come on. Where's that arrow? Here we go. Okay. So this is the full piece. A little bit of close-ups on the uh, on the wax component, and then a side view. Uh, so that's Shelly Davis. Carrie. Two pieces by Carrie Dalton. Uh, Carrie, are you here? <laughs> I, I did. I saw you come in. Hi. Hi. How are you? Let me, uh, let me bring you up. Okay. Give you the spotlight. And um, all right, we've got two pieces uh, by Carrie. This first one is called Summer, Sol uh, Summer Schemes. And then the summer, the second part. Oh, hold on. Deliberate in imperfection is the first. This is summer speed. Okay. Correct. Uh, so please take it away. Welcome. Okay. I'm a multidisciplinary artist in, and I live in Albany, New York. I paint in oil and cold wax medium, but I've also ventured into some art activism and installation work um, on some passion projects that I've been working on based on human trafficking and the displacement of the people of Ukraine. But uh, for my painting practice, I am inspired by nature. 
deliberate imperfection is really based on the golden rule in the Fibonacci sequence. And part of why I was inspired to create this piece is because I read an article about Navajo rug weavers and how they would weave a small imperfection along the borders of the rug so that their their spirit could escape. They they call it a spirit line. And I took this idea and blended it with the idea of the Fibonacci sequence, which is known as the perfect ratio and creating a piece that is imperfect because it does have like a spirit line where my soul, so to speak, could escape. And, and what, about, what, what about this piece here? Are they, um, is this uh, similar? Um, this is oil and cold wax. It's different. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just muted you by mistake. I went to mute myself. You're going to have to unmute yourself. <laughs> Okay, no sorry, worries. Carrie, sorry about that, Carrie. That's okay. Um, so Summer Schemes is oil and cold wax, but it is not part of the uh, the other series that I am working on that Deliberate Imperfection is in. This one is really just playing with color and showing the vibrancy of summer and doing it through something that's completely non-objective, just the colors and emotions. So that's all I have on this one. Did anybody have any questions? Is I do. Um, it seems like there's there's quite a bit of um, scratching, especially in this piece. Um, is that is that the case? I mean, did you did you sort of etch into the um, into the encaustic for this? Um, here, I'll I'll bring it up. Yes. Yeah, so uh, or was this more of like um, the application with a palette or something? Yeah. the The first layer that I created on this piece is texture. And it's um, using some something like Venetian plaster. So it, it can have the ability to have a lot of thickness to it without cracking. And mm. then I added the, the layers of colors to it. So How that, many layers do you think are, are on or is on this piece? Um, there's probably, well, I want to say there's probably about seven layers wow. of color on this one. Fantastic. It's it's gorgeous. It's a really, really beautiful technique. Um, really, really effective. Um, did you do it with the um with the the um the summer piece as well? A little bit, right? Yeah. This one doesn't have as much texture to it. I didn't yeah. do like the underlayer of texture to start with. It really just is the oil and cold wax layering that creates the texture in this one. Yeah, this one I haven't seen in person, unfortunately. Um this with the show, there's um there is, as I said, there's some work in the gallery and then some additional works um, on artsy. If I had big more walls, I would certainly have have more mm -hmm. in. Um, these are gorgeous. Uh, just what I was looking for, um, and I, I really, really, I'm, I'm glad that um, that you're part of the show, Carrie. And I, Great. I, Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Okay. Uh, Denise Giardulo, two pieces from Denise. Uh, this is a, this is a, uh, Cape Cod. Uh, Denise, uh, let me, I'm sorry. Denise Giardulo is, uh, living in Stone Ridge. Uh, these are, these, both pieces are six by six. They're small pieces. This is Cape Cod, which is, um, a landscape. And then the second piece is called Bouquet. Um, this, this piece has a lot of texture in it. All of the, uh, the lines that you see here are, are sort of, um, etched into, into the encaustic work, uh, which is one of the things that I really, really enjoy about encaustic is the, the multiple ways that you can really, uh, make use of this medium and, um, you know, do, do lots of different techniques, uh, to really make it effective. Okay. Uh, next we have Tina Glavin. Two pieces by uh, Tina Glavin. This first piece is called um, Mag Love it. it. This is this is a small piece. Uh, it's six by six. It's a photo encaustic. It's from her photo encaustic series. Um, she prints the photo on watercolor paper, adheres the paper onto a cradled wood board with book binding glue. 
enhances the photo with alcohol inks, and then coats the photo with encaustic media. Uh, the wax enhances the imagery as well as diffuses it, giving it an ethereal dreamlike quality. Uh, one of the things that I especially like about um, encaustic is the way that artists use it um, with photography. You can, um, you know, you can put multiple layers of encaustic on there, put a layer of encaustic, the photograph or, or the transfer, another layer on top of that, maybe another two layers, another, you know, transfer. So it gives this really beautiful uh, dimension to, to the piece that, um, you know, really enhances uh, your photographs. I mean, I'm, I, I fool around with photography myself and I've tried a handful of ways to do something different with my photographs instead of just a straight photograph. I've done collage. And then I also started fooling around with cold wax. And um, that was a great medium to really use for photography as well. So uh, photographers out there, if you're looking for a little way to, uh, you know, spruce up your photographs or to do something a little different with them, repurpose them, I would certainly suggest checking out um, Encaustic if you have the space or Cold Wax. Uh, the second piece by Tina is called Not Yet Remembered. Uh, this is Encaustic, Watercolor and an Alcohol Ink with La Truder. Um, it's 12 by 16, it's from her Transparency series. Um, she starts with a uh, liquid watercolor, in this case, a base painting on a birch cradle board. Uh, the, the, then she colors the encaustic medium with alcohol inks, varying the hues by how concentrated or diluted she makes the paint. She lays down uh, the wax, alternating thick and thin layers, and scrapes back and then fuses it. Uh, Latrador is a cross between fabric and paper, and it's colored with alcohol inks and collage gin. And that's this little element here that you see, which in person is really, really just really, really beautiful. Okay. Uh, Christine Graf. Uh, Christine is a really wonderful artist living in um, New York. This is called um, Enigma. Enigma. Christine uses mostly um, assemblage pieces. Um, and I'm never disappointed with, uh, with what uh, Christine uh, puts in the shows. Uh, as I said, this is called Enigma. It's uh, wax, beads, and jute. It's 12 by 12 and two inches deep. Uh, this piece could be considered a mate to unanswered prayers, and it also, another one of her pieces, and it also stands on its own. Uh, scattered across the waxy veil are not answers, but paradoxes buried in the strips on the surface. A curtain of slack threads covers the mysterious and inexplicable messages. On each side of the square on the edges, are knotted threads as well, as if they were the soft prison gates of a conundrum. Two pieces by Allie Herman. Allie lives um, up Troy Way, up by Albany. Uh, Allie works a lot with encaustics. Um, she does a really, really beautiful job and her, her layering is really gorgeous. Uh, this is the second piece called Frilly Gills. Um, so Frilly Gills, um, it contains thick layers of encaustic pores which is a really interesting way to do it. Uh, drips and textural marks combined with collage paper drawings layered into a surface of translucent wax. The first piece that we looked at um, where are we? is called Fairy Tales. That's here, sorry. This one is called Fairy Tales. This is, this is much larger. Uh, this is 40 by 30 and it's pure encaustic and collage. Uh, the work contains Again, thick layers of encaustic pores, drips, and textual marks. We have a beautiful abstract piece by, um, hold on one sec, where are you, Martha? Oh, gotta go back one sec. We have a beautiful piece by uh, Martha Hill. Uh, here we go. Uh, uh, Martha's piece is called Wandering. This is oil, cold wax, and pencil on paper. It's a small piece, six by six. Uh, she titled this painting Wandering because it feels like the marks wander across the page, and it reminds her of wandering across a field of meadows. It was interesting to experiment with cold wax and an oil paint. The wax speeds up the drying process of paint, so as she came back to the painting each day, she was unable or she was able to build up texture and incise lines by working into the drying layers of the palette. Uh, this is very... Um, you know, this, this, this is, this is totally uh, Martha's style of work. 
Uh, she does some really, really beautiful um, abstract works. A lot of them, um, you know, mostly paint. Um, I haven't really seen much um, much use of wax with Martha before, but I'm really pleased to see this one. All right, let's go back to Judith Hoyt. Uh, so Judith Hoyt has two pieces in the show. Uh, this first piece is called uh, Overlapping Circles, which uh, sold on opening night. So congratulations to Judith. Um, I know Judith mostly as a uh, metal assemblage artist. Um, she uses a lot of metal. So I was really, really pleased to see uh, um, this uh, paper collage with encaustic. Um, it's a smaller piece. It's 11 by 10 and a half. And then the second piece by Judith is called uh, Buildings and Briars. Uh, this piece is, uh, she made it at a, at a residency in Ireland, inspired by the scrapes of scraps of paper and the briars along the side of the road. Okay. Judith Hugentobler. I, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Judith, if you're watching and, I'm, and I, I didn't pronounce that right, I, my apologies. Uh, Judith lives in New York, New York. This is called Ghost Floral. It's a really, really beautiful uh, haunting piece. Uh, it's encaustic, pigment, and a digital photograph on paper. It's nine and a half by nine and three quarters. Uh, the photo, the photograph with floral patterns was collaged in Photoshop. A color print became the foundation for painting with pigments and encaustic to, to create layers. The watches of pigment have combined with the wax. The coloration and translucency is random as the process is both additive and subtractive. It's a really, really beautiful piece. I like the, you know, um, you can see some scratchings in here as well. Really wonderful encaustic artist in New Jersey, uh, Linda Ippolito. Uh, this first piece is called uh, Fields of Reflection. The second piece is called uh, Before the Rain. Uh, Fields of, of Reflections is encaustic. Uh, that's this first piece. Fields of re uh, Reflections is encaustic pigment sticks on a panel. And the landscape is ever changing. Its movement and effects are modified by the time, the sun, the clouds, expressing it with many layers to allow the light to come through. And the beauty is the beauty of encaustic. Locking in the colors and textures to bring the landscapes to my surface is part of her experience. It becomes successful when the work is completed and the viewer is returned to it. Second piece is called Before the Rain. This is encaustic and pigment stick as well, uh, six by 24. Uh, she's draw Linda's drawn to the encaustics of how the colors sit on top of one another. It is the layering of the paint, which she, she does a really beautiful job in layering um, her paints with the encaustics, um, with the option to scrape back and reveal the underneath tones along with creating texture. She loves the element of surprise when the heat may move the paint around in the smallest of details. She finds that very exciting. See, this is why I want to try encaustic. I think it would be a fun medium to use and experiment with. Uh, this is a piece that also sold at the opening. Uh, this is called um, Vincent. It's by David Kleiner, who lives in Stone Ridge, New York. This is gouache and encaustic on paper, and it's 12 by 9. Okay. Barbara. Are you here? I, I know I let you in. All right, Barbara, you're on mute. So if you want to unmute yourself and I'm going to bring you- I was you muted because I, my family is making lots of noise, but hopefully <laughs> okay. they won't. <laughs> Hi, Jasper. Okay. Um. So yes, Barbara's, Barbara's a, a wonderful artist that lives here in Socrates. Um, I've exhibited a number of pieces of Barbara's over the years. Um, I'm really, really thrilled to see what you've been doing lately. Um, you know, I think you, you've, you've hit a real creative uh, streak this year, and I'm so so pleased to have um, have this new work in the gallery uh, through through uh, the last couple shows, and this one in particular. This 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 piece is at the gallery, and it's a really really gorgeous piece. Uh, so I'll I'll let you talk about it, um, and then the second piece is called um, Now and Then. So go for it, Barbara. Welcome. Well, thank you, Robert. Um, I love this piece, Mount Fuji, myself. Um, I've worked with encaustic many times over the years, um, taking workshops at RNF, which now unfortunately they've stopped. Um, and when I was at RNF, I had the ability to 
take pieces that I had already been working on and dip them so they were waxed. So what the pieces that I am exhibiting now are multimedia collages, mixed media collages that are using pieces that were that were dipped previously. And plus many other other pieces as well. Um, Barbara, let I, me ask, uh, the, the wax is up top here. Is that right? Actually, all of it's wax. I shouldn't say all of it. Okay. Much of it. The, the top is waxed. Yeah. The mountain this, is waxed. Right. This I know this this top is a much thicker coat. Which right, you, in, yeah. in addition to the wax, I was I used glaze. Oh, and I okay. used glaze and glue very thickly. Oh, nice. Nice so, effect. Yeah. So thank you. So this piece is it is definitely very multimedia. I found water water um, soluble glaze that I've been working with now, which is so much easier than the the oil base that I was used to be using. So um, and and putting layers and layers of it to, to get the impression I want. I was working with a picture of actual Mount Fuji, um, trying to get it to look a little bit like that, but it's definitely much more. You know, it's more abstract, and the flowers on the side the um snow i'm trying to think what those are called i, I wanted to um show oh. what it looks like at various times of the season there with these blossoms and okay. on this side the other side is more of an abstract um look at what you know flowers might look like the piece right in the center i didn't intend for this but my son walked by, who's also an artist, walked by and said, Mom, that looks like, is there a, um, is there like a, a, um, like a Buddha or some kind of um, man there who is lifting his arm to the, to the mountain? Totally did not intend for that to happen, but I can see it there. And the final piece that I, I did, I added on, no, I'm sorry, just back to the other piece for a second was um, I looked up what Mount Fuji was in um, traditional Japanese calligraphy and that I used some kind of some vellum and I did the calligraphy up there and that says Mount Fuji. This piece for me is kind of emotional because um, it's based on pieces I've done in the past, but now have become waxed. As like I said, when I was at um, RNF, I took many of my pieces, and this um, piece with the the eyes that are looking at you um, is from a collage that I did and sold many years ago. But I still have the image, so I that ha that was doused in wax, and this has always been a bride to me. And as I'm aging, um, you know, the bride is not really where I'm at. And the piece on top of it is, that's why it's called Then and Now. So this is the bride. And then on top of it is a is is the same person, but in with long gray hair and sitting on standing on a balcony, kind of looking, looking out. Um, and there are flowers in there. So that also had some um, had some uh, gel, had ink, different kinds of um, media put in to give it more life. These are really beautiful, Barbara. I'm, like I said, I'm really, really pleased to see you know what you've been doing lately and keep going. I mean, Thank if this you. this is what you're coming out with, keep it coming. All right, great. Thank you, Barbara. Always a pleasure. Okay. Uh, next, I have a piece by Yvette Lewis. This is called Secrets. This is a small piece. It's encaustic on board. Um, Yvette is an artist living here in Socrates. Um, I'm, I didn't really, to be honest, know that Yvette did um, encaustics, but I was really, really pleased to see um, this piece from her. And direct from Vermont, is by way of Woodstock, by way of England, 
uh, is uh, um, Linda Linton. Hi, Linda. Hi, hi there. Yeah, I uh, certainly recognize this piece or this oh, view. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> you, <laughs> we have a second. Piece yeah. And this actually was a sunrise. Well, this one is the Taconic Mountains in southern Vermont, near where I now live. And it was actually a December morning. Um, you can see from the colors. Uh, and uh, I, I haven't used cold wax very often, but I started getting back into cold wax uh, last year. And, um, and I intend to continue. It's a very different look and a different feel to normal um, oil paints, which I use. And I normally do pretty, I suppose, conservative uh, landscapes using oil, but, um, you know, linseed oil as the uh, medium. So cold wax is a bit of a departure. And I like cold wax because you can really convey a mood with it. I think that's what, um, and these are small pieces that were done very quickly. Um, they're both essentially plein air. Um, and Linda, this one I, actually was done in Woodstock, um, Sunrise. The Sunrise in uh, Woodstock. When you, uh, use, when you use your cold wax, do you mix it with the pigment or? Yeah, um, yeah, you, okay. I do, yeah. Okay. All right. I Wonderful. mix it with the pigment. Yeah. And um, it's, it, yeah, it's a totally different feel. And I think it is it is it's a nice plein air medium if you just want to present mood as opposed to more detail. Right. And, of course, it was also fun during trip ditches because you have to make two discrete paintings, but at the same time, you want them to go together. Yeah, and I did want to point out that on the sides, um, yeah, the sides are painted as well. Oh, yeah, always. Yeah. I can't not paint the sides. I just so have the, to. It's a uh, scenario. Just me. <laughs> Even though yeah. the two, even though the two canvases connect, this little portion on the side continues on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I have to. <laughs> uh. I thought this would. This is this is the view from your home. No, it's actually not a view from my home. It's but, not. Uh, it's close. Close over in Manchester. Yeah, over in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Always a pleasure, Linda. All right. Yeah. Great Thank to see you. you. <laughs> great. Good to see you. Yeah. And good uh, watching all this great work. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you again soon. Right. Yeah. Up in, up in your hood. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Next are two pieces from um, Carol Manganata. Uh, Carol is an artist living in um, Seaside Heights, New Jersey. This is called Parasol Finery. Um, it is, um, purely encaustic. There's, there's some mixed media in here as well. Uh, the little cocktail umbrella. Um, but most of it is, is encaustic, um, and some collage. It's 15 by 11. Uh, both of these pieces, this piece here, and then the second piece, which is called Scarlet Tresses. Uh, both of these pieces are based on pastel life drawings with collage and encaustic. Sometimes she thinks nature uses her as a conduit to capture its wonders on paper and canvas. She seeks to interpret and push nature's color and light with paint outside in the tradition of plein air paintings and in the studio as a figurative artist. These mixed media works on ba are based on pastel drawings with encaustic, as I said. So this is a uh, parasol finery. And then this one is Scarlet Tresses. And both of them are fairly small. They're, uh, well, seven, it's 15 by 11 and 17 by 15. Uh, a sculpture, the only sculpture in the show by Kendall Matsuka. Uh, Kendall lives in uh, right, right, right down the road in Kingston, New York. This is called Idle Gossip. It's black gesso, acrylic ink, and wax. Um, it is nine by six, it's fairly small. Uh, the subjects in her work are usually brought and accompanied by mixed mediums. Uh, she prefers to use the image of rabbits in her works because rabbits are often thought of as one dimensional creatures without any significance other than the adorable exterior. She likes to turn them into her own creations. Her work is an, a reminder that ultimately anything can remain a mystery in spite of what is outwardly projected. 
two gorgeous landscapes by uh, Laura Martinez Bianco. This first one is called Winter Marsh. The second piece is called After the Snow. Both are encaustic on board and it's they're both really, really interesting um, sizes. Um, which one is this? This is Winter Marsh. So for both of these pieces, um, both of them, as I said, are encaustic, encaustic on board. Uh, this first piece, Winter Marsh, is 6 by 18. The second piece is 12 by 20. Uh, for both of these pieces, uh, um, Laura is drawn to landscapes, capturing and preserving the, in the views with pigment and wax. Uh, she's been working on site as a Planera pastel painter for over 20 years. She's inspired by the atmosphere, the colors in the space that surrounds her. When she ventures to uh, out to paint, she does not plan on completing a piece, but rather to interpret and learn from the location. Painting on site outdoors brings life to her paintings. Each plein air experience provides her with a study and underpainting, as it were, or a memory that is the inspiration for the encaustics. She loves the fluidity and spontaneity that happens when working with encaustics, melted beeswax and pigment. Um, encaustics allows her to simplify and work abstractly, starting with broad, quick strokes. Uh, first, she lays uh, the com composition and local color. Then the heats gun, it heat, heats the gun and torches manipulate and seal the wax layers while small shapes and lines follow to complete the image. Each encaustic painting is a sealed image of a landscape that she once stood in. Two pieces by uh, Noah McGrath. Uh, I've had a couple pieces of Noah's um, over the last few shows. Um, uh, Noah's a, he, he, I, I know him through taking classes with Melanie Delgado and I've been following him on social media. So I've been really, really thrilled to be exhibiting some of his work. Uh, the color balance of both of these are really, really lovely. Uh, this first piece is a small piece. It's called uh, Windswept. Uh, Windswept is four by six. Uh, taking the cast off beeswax. I'm sorry, both of these are beeswax and oil paint. Uh, taking the cast off beeswax from R and R paint sticks and applying them with a serrated pocket knife, uh, giving it fine, fluid lines flowing like wind or waves. The painting was created over months of slowly adding texture until it finally felt done. That's a really, really interesting way to do it. Um, and you know, again, R and F comes into the picture. So um, if you're into encaustics and you don't know about them, check them out. Uh, the second piece is called terraforming. Uh, this is 16 by 12. He used beeswax again um, for this one, the same process that he did with the last. Two pieces from Hadass Melamed. Uh, Hadass lives over in Kingston. Uh, these are really, really interesting pieces. Um, and what the most interesting thing, well, I, I think they're beautiful, um, you know, beautiful works, but um, I also, uh, find it really interesting that they're on wax paper. Both of these are um, watercolor on wax paper. Uh, 18 by 16, um, this piece here is called Fantasy One. Uh, it belongs to a series that emerged while living among the trees in Woodstock. Her artwork is an emotional documentation of what she sees around her. The final product may vary from a line of paper to a painted fruit or an abstract splash of color. The works have originated as combined natural and fantasy elements. Um, if you see the little, what I thought were first crinkles in here, these are all individually drawn, um, all of these, these little lines here. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, and this one um, as well, I think it's, it's just gorgeous. Okay. Two pieces from Wayne Montecalvo. Um, this would have fit perfectly in my Linda Montano show last year, which is very, um, you know, very Catholic based. We did a, a reinterpretation of the Stations of the Cross here at the gallery. And this, um, this would have fit perfectly. Uh, anyway, uh, where are we? So this is Wayne Montecalvo. Uh, Wayne lives over in um, Kingston, Kingston as well. This is called A Perfect Pair. 
It's encaustic, digital images, and acrylic painting. Uh, work, uh, this one is, the second piece is called Frito. And it's got each of the Lotteria cards in it. Which is the, um, the from Mexican uh, origins. Uh, the second piece is called Frito. So with both pieces, he works with the image, process it, and a var variety of materials in order to push the confines of art making to reinvent rather than reproduce an image. Allowing an idea to emerge organically through curiosity, he manipulates the materials to create unexpected results that distort and define and define and, re and redefine. He starts with something unexpected and ends up with something mysterious, aiming for singular or unique outcomes within a defined image. Taking a painterly approach gives him the option for discovery by welcoming chance occurrences to create a way to see familiar objects. All right, I'm gonna close this down so you're gonna be see my big face. Okay, let's bring out this next set here. All right, Jerry, Jerry order. Let's bring you up, Jerry. I see you. Okay, great. Uh, Jerry, I'm gonna give you the spotlight. Uh, if you can just unmute yourself. You have to unmute yourself, Jerry. All right. Can you hear me? Right. There you go. Excellent. Perfect. I gotta say, Jerry, this is this this piece is one of the um most talked about pieces in the show. People really oh, get it. out of it, and some people, you know, get hungry when they look at it. <laughs> it depends on where you come from. Exactly. Anyway, Robert, first of all, I wanted to thank you very much for including me in the show, or actually I should say, including the piece, which is uh entitled Let Them Eat Steak. Um, if you just take a look at this, this is a Jasper Johns painting made in 1958. Um, and I think I should just say that the way I work, all of my work is concept based. And um, this particular piece of mine is a, a pastiche of the Jasper Johns painting, uh, Three Flags a pastiche being done in the manner of. So I, you know, arranged my, my piece the way he did using the same uh, medium. Uh, this is, you know, his piece is encaustic. Mine is encaustic. Uh, I didn't I realize this piece was encaustic. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, it is encaustic. Uh, I used I used a brush to put it on, and when you work with a brush in an encaustic, um, the wax congeals. You know, wax dries very quickly. It, it doesn't have a heat source onto it, and and the wax that I was using congealed. And I found that by using the brush that way, I didn't want to play with the surface at all because the 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 combination of the congealing really gave it a meat-like texture. And maybe that accounts for the fact that people got hungry when they looked at it. I don't know. Um, the concept aspect of this has to go in contrast with Johns. Jasper Johns did this painting in 1958, and I'll speak very quickly for brevity. Uh, the, the painting was done at the height of the Cold War and also we would say the height of abstract expressionism. What he did in this particular painting was shift um, people's eyes away from ab X and put them into actually focusing on an iconic image, the American flag, uh, a very pop image. This was the birth time of pop art and it was looking at a pop image from the point of view of the graphics and just, uh, it was a certain coolness to it. And I think it was in contrast to abstract expressionism, which was very um, emotional, if you will, and emotionally generated. Uh, the way I am working with this piece, I don't want to get too much into it. I rather 
you know, people have their own personal experience with, with my work, but there is a somewhat political or uh, financial, economical, uh, you, you can't really, you know, disassociate any of those parts. But there's something about it that has to do with that, including the title, Let Them Eat Steak. And um, the piece in itself is a, let's say, social commentary, um, much, in, much in the way of Ernst Fischer, if you will. Uh, it was not so very long ago that I, I discovered this man, a writer, um, from of all places east germany and writing about art and shifting a view on art uh, to an experience that i never had in art school so uh, this is it was in a sense eye opening i did not become a communist or trotskyite or leninist but i had another view of art from reading his work um i am not an encaustic artist. I am not a painter. I uh, work more in a sculptural vein. Your only experience with me is in this one piece, which is, you know, sculptural in a sense because it's three dimensional, uh, highly three dimensional. And um, when I heard you speak of someone else earlier, he's the only sculptor in the show. I think I, I have to correct you I'll, and I'll say no. That, no, no. I realized I it take, came out of my mouth. <laughs> I don't take offense, you know, it's just, you know, easy enough. You know, you look at this, it's the only example of my work. You know, one can say, yeah, he's a painter. Well, I'm a sculptor. So no, this is definitely a sculptural piece for sure. And I am looking at the time and I realize we have other people here who have to you know, speak. So what I'm going to do is end my little spiel now. If you have any questions, I certainly would be happy to answer anything. I have, one, I have one quick question. Yeah. Um, did you choose the encaustic medium because the original was done in cost and with encaustic? Yes, but I also chose it because there's something about wax that would enhance the uh, the appearance of meat. I would, I would, oh. it wouldn't be like a two dimensional illusion that painting does. It would be more a three dimensional illusion because wax itself has this glaze that you look into. And so does, you know, when you think of it, the surface of meat, especially the fat, the yes. fat on this piece is translucent and it has a, a certain depth to it. Um, so I guess you could say I chose it to be perfectly honest because Johns did his piece in encaustic as well. It's a perfect medium for it. I mean, it gives that, you know, I mean, for meat eaters, you just want to take it off the mm -hmm. wall, put it on a grill. Um, it's really fantastic. Thank you so much, Jerry. I'd love to see some more of your work. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thanks for the kind words. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, sorry, technical difficulties. All right, great. Okay, so our next piece, two pieces actually, um, are by um, Linda Leo Powell Freeman. Uh, this first piece is called Rocks. Uh, it's encaustic on wax, and it's encaustic um, with with some beeswax. It's eleven by fourteen. Uh, the second piece by um, by Linda also is called um, Woods. You can really see the encaustic in this piece. Uh, Linda lives in Tivoli. Her newest passion is painting with encaustic paints, which is paint made with beeswax um, and pigment. Um, applying her experience in artist's eyes, she's creating paintings with encaustic paints that allow her to build with color and texture. Her hope is that her paintings express the beauty of the natural world. All right, um, Tracy, Tracy, you're here, excellent, I see you. Let me, let me give you the spotlight and um, let's, let's show your work. I wanted to, uh, to bring, bring, 
Uh, let me spotlight me for a second because you can re the, there's such really wonderful textures in these in these works that I thought you might want to uh, see them in person. Maybe we can bring it up to here so you can see some of the textures. I mean, there's there's multi multiple layers um, in this in both of these pieces. So, okay, let me bring that back up, share my screen with you again. Okay, Linda, it's all yours. Thanks, Robert. Oh, Tracy, um, sorry. That's okay, I know what you meant. Um, so um, both of these pieces are created with encaustic and um, RNF encaustic and um, RNF oil stick. Um, and then also I use uh, these types of repurposed onion bags um, that I don't leave in the paintings, but I use them like a stencil to create many layers of textures. Um, and um, I all of my work uh, uses some sort of repurposed materials. Um, I um, have a passion for um, repurposing materials and been doing a lot of work uh, with Beyond Plastics um, to help sort of end the proliferation of plastics in the environment. So um, by repurposing the plastics sort of bring attention to this issue. Um, the interesting thing about the um, yellow piece is that I had it in a show um, during COVID. Um, I live in Brooklyn and we normally do this big open studios with our Squanis. And during COVID, we decided to do an art walk. So we used a whole bunch of empty buildings on Atlantic Avenue. And I had this piece in the window and we rigged up some lights. And so there was the confluence of encaustic lights and glass and the sun. <laughs> and it's the first time in my history of ever using encaustic that the piece melted and someone okay. sent me a photograph and they're like, this is so cool. You can watch it melt in process. I'm like, oh my God, that was not supposed to happen. So normally encaustic is fine up to like 200 degrees, but I guess the science of uh, the light and the mirror and the paint um, created a temperature higher than, than that. So um, this piece actually was redone after it melted and I actually um, was happier with it second time around. So um, I guess it was an unfortunate series of events, but... Um, that's that. the first time I've heard that happening. Um, it was you know, certainly you, the first time it ever happened to me. So, yeah. um, how many how many layers do you think are on each of these pieces? Because they're really, I mean, there's there's multiple multiple layers here um, of well, both pigment, maybe 30, pigment. 40 layers of paint. Wow! wow. Um, and if you see the line where it's where you see the cross hatching, where that line is darker. Um, that's the oil stick. So I found that um, this material is, you can manipulate um, the grid, uh, unlike, you know, a Clementine bag where you can't adjust um, the material. And I really um, am a big fan of um, the distorted grid and I wanted to draw attention to it. So once the piece is finished, I rub oil stick into the grid lines which is slightly terrifying because you know you're finished and then you're blobbing all this paint on top of it, and then when you wipe it away, it just lives in the grid, and but it does enhance um, that distorted grid pattern. Wow. Someone asking me a question. Let's see. Really, really beautiful. Okay, so uh, the medium. So it's encaustic medium. So. Um, Encaustic medium is beeswax, Damar resin, um, and then the RNF paint is the Damar resin, the beeswax, and then the pigment. Um, so 
if you're using just plain beeswax, you might want to try encaustic medium because the resin in it, um, um, yes, the medium was RNF, um, but the um, the resin adds um, helps with the heating process and and helps it harden at the end. They're both gorgeous. Um, I'm really really pleased to have them here. I especially like this chartreuse one. Um, and and sadly, um, that yellow is um, a discontinued color from RNF because it did not. Um, it had they had some issues with it with the stabilization and so when i had to redo the paint i was like on etsy and all these places so i think i bought up every last bit of this yellow and i adore it and you can't get it anymore so use it sparingly and well <laughs> exactly and just so sorry robert to say rnf is not doing a classes within the kingston location but they do sponsor classes all around the country from their certified instructor. So you can still go on their website and find classes, just not in Kingston. Fantastic. Great. I was, and I was hoping that they would maybe collaborate with another group in the area, um, you know, that does offer classes to continue on because I've, I've heard so many positive things from a number of artists about, um, you know, about their materials and then also their studio. Um, so I, I, I hope that they, 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 you know, um, bring that back in a different form of some way. Yeah. And Pat, I think you're right that this, Pat was saying, um, she thought maybe that the color itself had to do with the melting. And I think you're right. And I think that's one of the reasons that they discontinued it. Yeah. Was because that of because I mean, it cost it, it would take, you know, a, a m many, many months, I would think, for it to to sort of melt in, in the sunlight. Um, yeah, and traditionally, like I have people who have work in their um, apartments in Miami and it's like yeah. they're all year round and there's never a problem. I mean, most yeah. homes aren't getting to 200 degrees. I think this was the paint, the light, the glass it was just a crazy circumstance, so. Well, that's the case. I hope that they find a different way to bring this color back in a more stable form. Yeah. Me too. Me well, too. Thank you so much for joining us, Tracy, and for being in the show. Thanks so much for hosting us. I have the parents who have met you. Thank you. Eileen. Hi. <clears throat> Am I unmuted? You are unmuted. Let me give you the spotlight. Okay. Here we go, everyone. This is Eileen Power. Hi. Uh, Eileen's a wonderful artist that I've had um, yeah, many, many pieces uh, of Eileen's over the years. This one is gorgeous. Uh, this first piece is called... Um, water and then the se um, second piece is water too. So uh, yeah, tell us about these. So um, just slight correction and Robert, thank you for uh, having me in the show as always. Um, this piece actually is part of a triptych called Earth, Sky, Water. So this one is Earth. Yes. Um, yeah. And um, like many others who've spoken before me today, there are many, many layers. Um, but it, it's not encaustic. I, I began a series of wax pieces uh, during the pandemic when at the beginning the art stores weren't open. And so you had to just, you know, you know how we are as artists, right? You look around your house and say, well, what can I use? And I don't know, for some reason, I started tearing up old canvases, painting over them with black, and then um, mounting them on um, the substrate is aluminum. Um, and I started painting with uh, beeswax candles from my living room that I was melting um, on my kitchen stove and um, then layering it up with, uh, with oil paint. And um, in this piece, I think, unless you're really up close, you're only going to see the wax that's residual in the corners and around the edges. Um, the second piece, which is not here, called Sky, was formed by the, that, and that one's not here, but was formed by putting a piece of printmaking paper over top of this piece, Earth, and um, using an iron um, to lift off uh, some of the wax. And then, of course, put more wax back on and lift it off, and you know how crazy we can be. Um, and um, 
finally, um, and, and the piece uh, that is called Sky is the printmaking paper that has the wax on it that appears to be, it looks as if they are clouds and that's why it's called Sky. Um, and um, these are each 38 by 20. And I couldn't really land this one until again, looking around the studio uh, and I've done a whole series of things with paint rags. I took a, a piece of one of my uh, paint rags and uh, put it over top of this and then drew that oil stick line beneath it, uh, much uh, like these megalithic figures that I saw when I was in the Orkney Islands. So this one, I think that piece of uh, paint rag and the oil stick beneath it grounded it. So I called it earth. The middle one not here is sky. And the third one water is again, many, many layers of, uh, of the same beeswax candles and oil paint. And uh, there are even um, layers of paint rags beneath this that didn't quite land for me. And then I painted over everything and started again. But I, I love the pentimento that comes through uh, on these layered uh, pieces. And again, on the top there, that's a, a paint rag and that's oil stick on the bottom. And beneath the oil stick and the other oil paint, you'll see another series of paint rags peeking through. Earth, sky, and water, a triptych really dedicated to, <clears throat> you know, calling attention to what we are doing to our environment. I think to keep it short and sweet, that's kind of what these are about. I did want to mention that you may not, you, it, it may not be visible um, online here, but both pieces are mounted on sheet metal. Yeah, on aluminum that I, that that when you have it cut, it is shiny. And then I used an orbital sander to mm. to make it look dull. Um, and then I glued the canvas um, to it and continued. Once you start building up layers, it needs a solid substrate. So you continue building it up once you've mounted it um, on the on the aluminum. Well, it bounces, it balances them out beautifully. Thank so you. I think they would be, you know, different pieces if they were, weren't mounted on, on the, um, the aluminum. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Aline. Thank Always you. Thank you, Robert. Okay, two pieces from uh, Amy Pressman. Um, Amy is an artist living in West Stockbridge, Massachusetts, which I don't think is too far from here. Uh, this first piece is called Between Seasons. The second piece is called uh, Ferns in the Moonlight. Uh, both of them are encaustic, although Ferns in the Moonlight, this piece is both encaustic um, and, and cold wax. It was uh, created by photographing a fern in the shadow against a blue stone background. It's printed on Kozo and mounted using encaustic medium. The color was added using oil sticks and cold wax. Um, in the first piece, Between Seasons, uh, the inspiration came from a branch and some birch bark uh, collected that she collected while walking in the woods um, of her home. Uh, she picked up the branch in one day and saw the beautiful shadow that was cast in the studio. She photographed it and printed it, uh, which became the basis for this piece and the beginning of a series of shadow photographs of natural elements collected in the nearby woods. Amy Preston, or Pressman, I'm sorry. Uh, two pieces by Yvonne Rojas Cowan. Uh, both of them are called uh, Mountain Skies. This first one, Mountain Skies 1, um, has been sold. Congratulations, Yvonne. Um, and the second piece is Mountain Side, um, I'm sorry, uh, Mountain Skies 2. Uh, Yvonne lives here in Socrates. Um, and both of them have uh, cold wax mixed with oil and she used a palette knife to put it on the canvas, creating some really, really beautiful texture um, on both pieces. Elizabeth, really pleased to have another piece by Elizabeth Schaefer, a wonderful artist living here in Socrates. Um, welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for having me. 
This is called uh, Women Waiting to Vote in Iran. Um, and this is this is a um, a topic that you have been exploring for a little bit now. Yes, right? I was very concerned really about how difficult it is for women to to vote in particularly in Muslim countries and how brave they are to to um, to confront this and to, and stand in long lines to vote. Um, and I use the Hiromi paper in the background because I felt it sort of complemented the, um, the the feeling of of the um, of the piece. I don't usually like to to work in um, with photographs. I would rather p paint um, you know, with freehand. But um, sometimes photographs do 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 work very well, and I, I think that this was is an example. Sorry, I was talking and I was muted. Um, is the encaustic um, on just the photograph or the entire piece, Elizabeth? On the on the whole piece, I, I um, whole piece. Okay. it's a a photo transfer on encaustic board, and then I I cut out pieces of the Hiromi paper. Um, I think it's a Japanese paper um, to sort of frame the, not literally frame, but to enclose the the surrounding photo. And um, so I, I do want to go on and work more in, not from photos, but from, you know, free form with encaustics. That's what I hope to get back to. So this is a series that you'll continue with? Perhaps. I mean, I have quite a few photographs from that time. It came from a time when I was reading the New York Times print, uh, printed version. So that sort of, you know, that was several years ago. I think it was 2017 or so. But um, uh, th there are a few photo photographers whose work I really like, like Henri Cartier -Bre Bresson, um, Arge, um, Sebastian Salgado. So I would tend to, to choose their photographs more than others, I think. It's beautiful. I'm really pleased to have uh, another piece from this series. I know a couple, well, maybe two, two or so years ago, there was a piece from this series that we had sold. Um, so I'm really pleased to have another one. The other, the other piece had um, was um, you didn't have the Hiromi paper in the background, uh, no. and it was a different, different photograph too. So this, I really like the um, how the the dome over here really connects with uh, the paper in the background. I think it was, it's it's balanced really nicely. Thank you. And all of the, you know, all of the line movements. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Elizabeth. And I'm uh, you love it. like to see some more of this for sure. I will. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Pat, are you? I saw you come in. Did you want to talk a little bit about? Sure, sure. I'll talk about this. <laughs> All right, great. Let me uh, let me find you here on my screen. I hear you. Here I'm we go. Excellent. Okay, let me bring you uh, into the spotlight. And there you go. Uh, so this uh, this this is the first piece called uh, Della Mia uh, Della de Mar, Is it called? I'm sorry. Costa Della Mia Mente which means the coast of my mind. Um, this is a piece that I did in 2020 at the beginning of COVID. And um, I had taken courses like, like others uh, over at um, RNF. And interesting, in 2011 was my first class at RNF. And um, unfortunately that day it snowed and the instructor was a no-show. So for many years, I self-taught how to work in encaustic. So 2020 was an opportunity for me to take the time and experiment and just blow it wide open how I wanted to deal with encaustic. Um, this piece in particular is uh, based on work done by a fellow named Ben Hecht. He does very large scale uh, aerial pieces. And I was inspired by the work that I saw that he did um, and did my miniature version because this is a six by six piece. Um, it, I did a couple of renditions on this very piece and 
sculpted it and re-sculpted it. So you can consider this to be a sculpture as well. Um, and I just well, wanted to- I just wanted to point out in this piece in particular, you probably can't see it here, but the mountain range is built up. Uh, so there's 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 a, a real texture and it really pops off the um, off the canvas here. Yep, I think you did that beautifully. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's also a, a point of view from uh, Real Monte Sicily, where there are the Turkish steps or the Turkey de, uh, Scala de Turkey, and um, the cliffs created carved or eroded steps into the rock face. So that's my interpretation of that place. <clears throat> what about the second piece? The second piece is 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 a lot different. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, I, when I first when I first started painting in encaustic, my goal was to paint, to use it as just yet another medium. And that's one of the hardest things that I've ever experienced was trying, I call it trying to tame a wild horse. Um, it has a mind of its own. It really does what it wants to do. You'll put down a line and you'll hit it with the heat and then all of a sudden it diffuses and it's gone. Um, and you have to do it again or do it again. And uh, it, It's a fight sometimes. So achieving something that's uh, somewhat realistic, abstractly realistic, it has always been my goal. And this is a, a more recent piece. And um, I've been working more towards abstract, but this was a piece that I did once I returned, I was out in uh, Missouri over the summer and this is not a scene that I was seeing. So I was happy to be back home among the mountains and painting the landscape here. I just wanna correct you too about uh, Encaustic is not a new medium. Encaustic has been around at least since the first, late first century BC. And the Romans uh, in Egypt used encaustic to paint fur funerary portraits. So it's been a medium that's been around a very long time. Yeah. And thank you for having me in yet another show. Absolutely. Pat, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of your work and these, these two pieces are gorgeous. Thank you. This one brings me right, right home. <laughs> me this too. One, this one wants, wants to take me away. So, <laughs> all right. I'm glad you joined us today. Thank you. Thank Pat. you. Thank you. Two pieces by Cindy Sumerano. Uh, this is a triptych, um, and this is called "In the Garden." It's collage with encaustic ink and oil, and Cindy uses um, a number of different layers here, um, and it looks like. She has, um, you know, uh, put the the text and the images and the pigments between between um, multiple layers, which added a really nice dimension to it. Uh, so this is in the garden. It's a piece comprised of three wood panels strung together with bead links. It was done at a time when her older daughters were coming into their independence and womanhood, venturing out into the world to face it on their own. And the second piece is called Conflicted. Uh, Conflicted is a mixed media. It's collage with encaustic and oil stick on wood panel. It's a small piece. It's eight by eight. Two pieces from uh, Sandra Taylor. Uh, Sandra lives in Belmar, New Jersey. Um, I used to work with Sandra when I um, ran a couple galleries in New Jersey. So I'm, I'm really pleased to have uh, some of more of her work here. Um, unlike the others, this is cold wax, which... Um, uh, I've used it once. I've never used encaustic, but I do hear that cold wax um, is a lot um, more user friendly um, than encaustic. If any of the encaustic artists or cold wax artists here, you know, want to chime in about that, please um, let me know. Uh, this first piece is called Escape. Uh, the second piece is called Beyond. Uh, they're both small, eight by eight. Um, Beyond is um, this a recent loss and art making helps her to process what has happened to her and reflects her curiosity about what is beyond planet Earth once we leave it. And the second piece, Escape, uh, documents Sandy's present circumstances and emotional context of the past year. Art making is often her escape. And art, art can be healing, as we saw in last month's show, which was um, Art Equals Healing, 
uh, inspired by the life and career of Linda Mary Montano, which if uh, you wanted to see how art heals, um, please have a look at that show. It's still up on Artsy. Um, and it's a, a, a wonderful um, exhibit of how um, art making has helped artists in the area, some of them in this show, um, process uh, what they've been going through, um, through, through art. Okay, J.D. Weiss. J.D. is a, uh, for, I know her primarily as a photographer, a wonderful photographer in Woodstock, New York. Um, but for the last couple of years, she's been experimenting with some pigment and some um, encaustic, which I'm really, really happy to see. This one is an encaustic painting. It's called The Sun is Always Rising. It's 24 by 36. It's got uh, beeswax, dumber resin, oil paint, oil sticks, and an India ink. The painting illustrates something everyone on earth shares. And when all else fails and we are looking, but are unable to think of something to raise our spirits, there is great comfort in knowing that the sun is always rising. Uh, so this is J.D. Weiss. If you're interested in seeing her um, gorgeous landscape photography and other photography, uh, please have a look on the um, Emerge Gallery site. There's a lot of work by J.D. there. Uh, some gorgeous, gorgeous work. She still works with a two and a quarter camera and still works with film. Okay. Our last artist that I'm going to bring up is uh, Leslie Yolen. Uh, Leslie's a new artist for the gallery, and I'm really, really pleased to have her here. Um, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Uh, it is called uh, Marking Time. Uh, Leslie, I'm going to bring you up if you want to unmute yourself. And um, let's hear about Marking Time. And then the second piece is called Cadence. Uh, and for some reason, I'm not able to click on it. All right. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you, Robert. Can you hear me fine? Again, yes, yes. Okay, great. So this piece is um, the one that started my painting and sculpture series called Marking Time, which broadly addresses the cycles of life, memory, and the passage of time. I'm really interested in creating works that are evocative rather than descriptive. Um, my interest is in exploring the expressive qualities of the various media that I work with and the physicality of materials. Sometimes I am inspired just by moving the materials around. Um, I, I choose wax for its ethereal qualities. The translucence and depth it provides adds to the mystery and intangible aspects of the themes that I keep recurring or returning to. I often incorporate natural materials, as in this piece, as metaphor for the life cycle. Um, the resulting nat neutral color that always comes up um, is really quiet and serene. It evokes the essential qualities of moments of repose. This piece also incorporates um, burned paper, coffee grounds, tea bags, and those um, bird-like pieces are lilac seed pods. Tell me the a little bit about, I'm sorry, Go ahead. Bit, tell me a little bit about this section here. That sort of is the section. burned paper. Um, okay. Burned in uh, the little circular shapes are the burned edges going through the paper. Beautiful. And you can see like the squares, the outside edge of the paper, which is of a texture that uh, changes the wax. And I really, really like the coffee grounds on the bottom here. Um, I use coffee grounds a lot. <laughs> yeah, they hold really um, nice. Yeah. Um, something I learned like a lot of the staining and the stuff about coffee and tea from Wayne Montecalvo, actually. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, and then the other piece is called Cadence. I don't know if you can get the whole image up or if it's just- yeah, for some reason, it's not letting me click on it. Okay. Well, this is a, a detail of like the middle <laughs> and it incorporates not only just natural objects, but those are actually uh, ob steel pieces that set up this um, vibration that emanates across the piece. There's like this tension builds and then it resolves into the um, piece that you feel when you arrive at the root or the tonic of an ending in music that reverberates into silence. So that piece got called Cadence. 
It also incorporates um, a lot of natural materials like the tea bags, rusted paper, a woven cloth, and some unidentified seed pods. Here is the this piece here. I don't know if you can see it in the dark now. Um, is another one from the Marking Time series. It's called Stardust, and it also uses coffee grounds. Here's here's a full um, a full piece uh, a full image of uh, cadence. There, there you go. All right, great, wonderful. Um, these these are gorgeous. Uh, you know they they're I. They really complement the show really nicely. I'm, I'm like I was saying, I, I'm, I've been wanting to do an encaustic show um, for a while, so um, I wasn't disappointed, and I would certainly do this again. Yay, Leslie! Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, Robert. It's really nice to have the opportunity to talk about our art. I, I've always, you know, I always enjoy hearing everyone's stories behind the work. And especially their process, since I'm not a visual artist myself, I'm always intrigued by how y'all can just, you know, pull these pieces together from coffee grinds and, you know, scraps of paper and, um, you know, everything else that you use. It just amazes me. Um, one of these days, I hope to do do something like that myself. Um, you will. Yes, yes, I will. And that that's that's a goal. I think that maybe that's one of the goals for 2024. <laughs> cool. Uh, I wanted to again thank everyone. Um encourage um any of the artists or anyone um you know that's 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 watching uh or that has seen the show to um you know give give encaustic and wax a try. Um it is um you know it's it's a it's a really cool medium to use it adds some really great dimension um some fantastic texture um and you can sort of make it your own so um you know have have a look please at the spend a little time um on the artsy site looking a little more closer um at the work um and again at you know some of the other shows as i mentioned another online show just opened on saturday it's all cell phone photography. And, you know, some of them, a lot of them, you wouldn't even realize were from cell phones. I mean, we've come from, you know, such, such a long way now with the cameras on our phones that, you know, even people that normally would walk around with a um, real camera um, now use cell phone because the quality is, you know, so great, myself included. Um Although I do like taking out my camera every once in a while and get that, you know, that um, that eye on with the camera and, um, uh, you know, uh, explore the world that way through the camera's eyes. All right. Uh, so that's our show. Thank you, everyone, for joining me and for, um, you know, telling us all about your work. And, um, you know, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful holiday. And um, enjoy the rest of the year. Happy New Year, everyone. You Thank too, you. Robert. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now.